Uh, just going to take a, a minute or so to let people uh, hop in to the live gathering. So good to see everybody. Um, happy eclipse. It actually happened um, in the middle of the night last night, but I think it's still really relevant and we can feel the energies. Can everybody uh, hear me? And see me okay? Okay, good. Fine. Okay, good. So I like to start these. Let's just kind of, um, as we gather in circle, let's just connect to our breath for the first few moments as people hop on. So just take a moment to breathe in through your nose and come into your body. Come present and breathe out. And a few more times, just like that, just breathing in through the nose and exhale through your mouth. One more time, breathing in. And breathing out. Awesome. So, um, First of all, thank you all for, for joining me today. It's really a wonderful, there's so much, there's a theme that's coming through and, and really this is why the, the um, seeing with clear eyes and, and clear vision is what the, the topic is. There's so much chaos and there's so much good stuff happening. And I wanted to kind of let you know that the theme that we're gonna go through is um, learning to see or not learning we have the skill it's seeing the energy of what's present seeing the seeing clearly the energy it's um there's a whole facade that happens in the 3d world but sensing the energy remembering to sense the energy and then taking personal responsibility so that's that's sort of the overarching theme but i wanted to touch start first with this sense of in the last, ever since our shelter in place began, there's, you can feel this sense of mourning. There's a collective grief. And some people talk about it of, you know, mourning the loss of, of what was. And, and one of the things that came through to, to kind of, as we close this eclipse season, which has really been very poignant during COVID is that some things are lost and some things are just paused. And I think it's important for us to see clearly around that. So it can feel like gatherings and hugs and handshakes are lost, but those are the things that are really, they're only on pause. And there are some things that will be lost, but they'll be lost because they're needed to be, they're needing to be changed. So there's this sense of empowerment around the quote unquote collective grieving process. When we can see clearly what's happening, we get to know that some things are on pause and they'll come back better than ever. And some things are, some things are needing to be changed. And so they will be, they will be changed. We'll have the opportunity to shift them. And then I hope that you've also noticed that some things well, we've really come to see how precious some things are. Things like our health, things like our loved ones, things like food on the table and a safe place to live. And we're really, um, there's a lot of blessings during this time. And, and I want to um, invite us to consider one of the themes that is in the air around this fear that's still carrying on. Is it's, a, it's, a, it's a collective cultural uh, fear and a lot of what's needing to be changed as we go through this day this time together we're going to see that it's there's there's collective themes that are in the air that we're getting the opportunity to shift so it's less finger pointing and who's the bad guy it's more what are these things that are in the air that we breathe that we are under the radar that we get to have clear sight about so so one of them is you know it's very clear especially with covid we're trying to avoid death and in our culture, we've been trained to avoid death in so many ways. If we consider the ways that we 
want to keep looking young forever. We value youth. We, that's part of our symbolism of, of beauty. Uh, and, you know, we have all these technologies and we have all these advancements that are helping us avoid death. We also, when people get close to death, we send them into homes so that we don't have to tend to our old. And then when somebody dies, we don't have a procedure for helping someone pass. We almost just kind of give it to somebody. And it's also illegal in our culture to, to tend for our dead. So it's nobody's fault. But it's interesting that we're trying to avoid death because this virus kills people, right? So... I'm going to make sure, can everybody make sure they're muted? There's a couple little sounds coming through in the back. So just check that you're muted. It's a, I don't want to have to check everybody. but um, So it's interesting to, to consider this collective belief that we have around fear of death. And then this virus is kind of a, a constant threat of that, of this, you know, are we going to be well? Is everybody going to be well? Um, how can we control? How can we... Uh, linearize really so that we can you know get back to some semblance of control and there's so much more that we get to um, realize right now and that's why I, I, I sense the theme of personal responsibility and I mentioned in the podcast that this this particular eclipse that just happened um, around uh, I think 1 a.m. this morning is the same it's um, the same degrees of a lunar eclipse in Capricorn as was, um, it wasn't on 9-11, but it was before 9-11. And then there was another one that happened. I got the date wrong in my podcast, but it was um, when JFK was shot and Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech. So this is a really interesting time for us to be considering the similarities of how we might feel of the fear uh, around, you know, there was a lot of fear around transportation and flying and safety and terror around 9-11. And there's a lot of just interesting collective fears that we're, um, we're getting it. We're being invited. That's why personal responsibility came through. It's, it's, it's really this time we get to step into more empowerment around what's happening. And I want to also say, you know, as we step into this empowerment, we get to be respectful to each other. We get to be real and, and take our own health and our own immune system into our own hands. But also we get to claim our sovereignty. And uh, right when this virus started, I did a podcast that I, um, what came through was that, you know, Corona means crown. So crown of light, this idea that we get to claim this crown, this orb of light that is our, some would say, ascension path. Um, it's, our, it's our sovereignty. And if you think about the way that many saints and religions are pictured with this crown of light over their head, and then a lot of the, the Egyptian gods had these sun disks. And so we have this corona virus, corona meaning crown. And we have a, the word outbreak is interesting too, because outbreak can also mean break out. So it's, it's almost like we, there's a fork in the road. So do we get to keep going into the, the fear space or do we get to really step into our own innate ability to sense energy, to sense truth and to claim our sovereignty and take responsibility for everything about us. And that's really what's poignant right now, which is why uh, I feel like seeing clearly, seeing with new eyes, seeing with, with true eyes. And I want, us to, I want to invite us to consider, uh, I wrote a book on this called The Answer Is You, but the idea is that um, we're always sending out signals all the time. We're casting energetic votes towards what we want to see by what we, how, what we choose to feel, how we choose to um, see a situation. And there's many different ways to see every single situation. As we know right now, everybody, it's very clear in our media that there's very many opinions about whether we should gather and whether we should wear masks and all this stuff, right? So we get to remember that every single thing we pay attention to, everything we vibrate about is us casting an energetic vote for what we, the world we want to create. And now 
our energetic votes with all the chaos, because there's tons of chaos. Chaos is necessary for huge transformation. The structure has to be willing to crumble so that we can put new structures in. So there's a lot of chaos. And then there's this ability for us to seed this, this sort of very um, uncertain time to, to, to get conscious, to get clear, and then to choose, to choose what we want to plant energetically. It's all energetic because we, we are coming to remember that we are energetic and that we're all connected, but we're these individual consciousnesses, you know, that, that, that's the cool gift about being on planet earth is that we get to remember this creation process and we're getting invited right now to remember that we're not just a cog in the wheel of a machine. We are this sovereign beautiful energetic being that has the potential for vast transformation and so that's what i want to offer I take everything i say as always with a grain of salt but that's what i want to offer us as we um go through a couple practices today and it's interesting when we think about this idea of i you know i talked about some things are paused and some things get to be changed and so we get to really consider for ourselves what do we want to keep and what do we want to replace so there's been this wonderful there's been so much opportunity, you know, we've been shown the ways that the track that we're on, which is isolation, technology, fear of death, you know, um, being feared into doing things. And we also get to remember that we are always connected. We're vast. We're, we, we, we like going inside. We need to connect to ourselves and, you know, Maybe we even like cooking and gardening right now, and we like being local and staying small. There's all these things that we get to keep, and also all these things that we get to replace. You know, our ability to think, you know, one of the things that was relevant for me was even though I am very green, I had this, whenever I wanted to go, when I had a craving for something, I would just go to Trader Joe's because I was right around the corner. And then I got this, oh, I don't need to, that's my version of, um, you know, immediate satisfaction of what I want. And it's, we're, we're kind of getting invited to slow down and to really get clear about what we do need and then what we do want, not on an autopilot. So we've, society has us humming along on this kind of frenetic pace. And so now we're getting to slow down. And I think a lot of us can feel that there's some beauty and relief even though it can be uncomfortable, sometimes there's this naturalness where we kind of know like, oh, I get to take a deep breath now. And we kind of like this pace because it is more natural. So that's one of the, the keep replace aspects that we get to, to look at. And as we seek keeping and replacing, I want to um, invite us to remember that we are these energetic beings. And so we get to feel for the things that make us feel expansive and then feel for the things the things that make us feel contractive and that could be a very simple recipe for keep and replace because if we're these beings that seed every moment of every day the future then we want to i would choose to keep the things that make me feel expansive so i want us all to just for a moment you can just close your eyes and just think of someone you love. Think of a pet. Think of a vacation you had. Think of a, a joyful experience with a friend. And just notice how you can kind of feel the opening of that, that your heart opens up. There's a lightness. There's a brightness. If you think about something that makes you smile, there's an uplifting energy. And just notice how that feels for a moment. And then bring to mind something that in the last week maybe freaked you out or you just didn't like or just frustrated you person something you saw in the media and you can kind of feel this ugh. you can feel your heart kind of sink in and it's almost like your shoulders even haunch maybe physically but also energetically we kind of shrink up so just noticing that difference and then let's get back to the find another thing that makes you feel expansive and just let's let's reason bring ourselves back to that expansive someone you love something about you something that's present in your life that's just so good and feel yourself expand 
so this this ability that we are just tapping into this are, these are our energetic eyes this is something that we get to really build muscle strength with right now because as we look around the world there's plenty of things that will make us feel contractive and it's interesting because the one of the um, things that came through about a month ago is you know how much humanity is almost addicted to feeling negative energy to feeling fear and we're all facing that right now. There's some comfort in this lower vibration and it really does take a conscious choice to take a deep breath and to pick ourselves up and to choose to see. And then when we remember how good it feels to choose to see and to, to, to reach for those things that make us feel expansive, it's a very simple recipe for our future. And I've come to know that everything simple is profound. And so it's simple because that way we can bring it with us everywhere we go. You know, um, if we're in line at the grocery store and somebody's really upset, is that a frustrating experience or is that some time for us to have compassion and realize that person's probably going through a lot and then just feel grateful that we feel grounded and maybe smile at the clerk and then spread some more light. You know, those types of things are super powerful and it's, it's about us being able to claim our power to create. So I just want to invite us to remember that this ability to sense energy is in everybody. It's just a matter of, of practice and intention. And I want to share with you next a quote from Abraham Hicks. I'm sure many of you have heard of her. Uh, she's a channel for this entity called Abraham, but I think it's relevant for us right now. And uh, she says, the content of your vibration, how you feel right now, whether you're thinking about the past, the present, or the future, how you feel right now, as you think about the past, the present, or the future, is your life. And it's a precious, fabulous, creative life that you're not wanting to squander in a place of resistance. Your life is right now. And I had this experience this week where I, you know, I really was invited to sit back and get real comfortable with staying at home and being in my garden and not rushing to do anything. And I looked around and realized how precious my garden was and how cool it was that I have a little dog and how right now there was nowhere else we needed to be. And so we really do get to remember the simple things, to claim our power to feel good and to seek those people and those things that make us feel good we have that power and as we see we'll get to an exercise in a little bit but as we see clearly our collective it's almost like we're steering a big heavy ship and our ship has been charted straight ahead and we're being shown all the ways that that course doesn't serve and now we're being invited to steer this huge heavy ship to make a 90 degree turn and so I think you can sense the amount of time and energy that might be involved in taking that ship and turning 90 degrees because that's where we know we want to go that's where we're at we're, we're we're that's the level of inertia that we get to shift but within all this chaos there's so much potential for seeding light and I hope you can feel the truth of that. And I want to really quickly just touch on in the media as we're talking about this, there's a lot of theories about what's really happening. And while it might be easier to blame somebody, to find somebody doing something wrong, I want to invite us to consider that it's the collective, like I was saying that we have all the power we need to make this shift and that it's not a person. It would be easier if it was a person, then we could just stop the person. 
it's a collective. We all, when we all take responsibility, then we all get our power back. And then we all are invited to do these shifts to, to realize, yeah, part of me was cool and comfortable feeling mediocre. I want to feel amazing. I want everybody around me to feel amazing. I want this world to thrive. I'm going to do my part to vibrate like that, to remind others to vibrate like that. And it's almost a victim mentality when we can blame somebody for doing something to us. So when we are just willing to drop that and not worry about what the real story is and step into our story and even really realize, does it feel good to be a victim? No. How do we want to feel right now? Well, we want to feel good. So everything about everything in our lives, does it make you feel good? And what can you do today to feel good? It's just that simple of a recipe. And I want to invite us toward an ideal. And, and you might throw in some other words and we can, at the, at the close of our uh, practice, maybe I invite you to see if there's any other words you want to add, but there's an ideal that we're headed for where we want to feel peaceful, empowered, that we are the conscious creators of, of change and that we are capable of transformation. And we want to feel good and we want to feel love. And these ideals are what we're seeding. And I also want to invite us to even to just kind of shift, to start to make that shift of, you know, right now there's a lot of invitation for shift. Are we, are we stuck inside? Or are we presented with this tremendous opportunity to go within, to remember our inner world? to remember our ability to sense and feel energy? Are we being forced to stay at home? Or are we being presented with this tremendous opportunity to be still, to do less, to remember how to just simply be? Are we being feared into avoiding death? Or are we, are we being invited to be even more aware of our health, seek to be even more vibrant, to take action to, to keep our bodies well, to, to broaden our ability to be strong and immune and vibrant. So much opportunity. And so really it's just we're becoming aware of these programs I call them programs because I see them as almost like these thought forms, like clouds in the sky, but it's like this dark cloud is just a thought form that we keep feeding our energy. So as we keep, as long as we keep feeding, you know, the dark wolf, it's going to be there. I, I, the quote, I'm not going to get it right now, but I'm sure you've all heard it, which is like, you know, you've got this, this white wolf and this dark wolf, which one are you going to feed? And then the one that you feed is going to be the one that ultimately uh, gets the food and, and stays around. Okay, so I want to get us to a couple practices. I've talked for a while now. We're going to get, I want to, um, I want to share my screen with you guys. And we're going to do, we're going to do three um, different things so that we, so we're on this, this kind of one chapter's closing, another chapter's opening, one door's closing another door's opening. And so I invited you guys to kind of consider what were those things that you wanted to release and then also to consider, you know, what are those things that you want to, what's that ch chapter you want to open? So we're going to do, um, let me share my screen. We're going to start with something that I'm sure you've all heard of. Uh, it's called EFT. And EFT is, is pretty cool. It's, um, it, it overlays with the Chinese, uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, acupressure, energy meridians, but it's, it's not associated at all with that. But it, what it does is it, we're going to be tapping. We're going to be tapping with our, our, our pointer finger our, and our um, middle finger. And when you tap, you're tapping. They, they found the energy meridian points that are um, most close to the surface of the body and associated with a variety of different um, 
cycles in our body. So, so we don't need to use a needle to get deeper into the energetic line. These points are right at our, at our, at our skin. So we're going to be tapping and the tapping is going to help to um, release the old stuck energy and then to um, infuse new energy. So it's going to be kind of this energetic reset. And so I show you this, this image of this woman. These are all the points that we're going to be tapping and they're numbered. So the karate shot point is you're just going to take your pointer finger and your middle finger. You're just going to tap. You can kind of see what I'm doing. And then, you know, then we'll go down to the eyebrows and you're going to use both points to tap. Um, you can't get it right or wrong. People do this with one hand and you can cross over. It's just a matter of um, sort of accessing these points. So you can speak aloud with me. You can also, I invite you if there's other words that you want to, um, these are just kind of words that I was channeling yesterday that I felt were relevant for whoever's gathering. But if there's something else that's more relevant as um, I'm suggesting as we do this practice, then just do what feels good for you. So, um, so we're gonna begin by tapping the karate chop point on our hand. And speaking louder to yourself, even though there are things that I can think of right now that could prevent me from feeling peaceful, that could prevent me from feeling at ease and vibrant, I still want to focus my energy, my awareness on accessing the best and brightest possibilities for this precious day. And let's switch hands. So just switch the, the fingers, even though there could be unexpected happenings, there could be snags, there could be more fear. Just like every other day, I still choose to have a peaceful, loving, vibrant day. And even though just telling myself to have a beautifully balanced day hardly seems enough, the fact that I'm doing it is sending myself a powerful, intention and I'm sending it to the universe and wouldn't it be nice if my intention is reciprocated in the form of an amazing day all right so we're going to go a little bit quicker now we're going to go to tapping on the eyebrows just inside where the eyebrow starts you're just going to tap and say I want to have an amazing day today and you're going to move right to the side of the eyes tap I want to feel love health and vibrance. Move to under the eyes. I want my day to be filled with happenings and things that make me feel good and expansive. Under the nose. Although it's not always easy for me. Under the chin. I know, just below the lip on the chin, sorry. There are often unseen hurdles to having an amazing day. Collarbone, just tap right at the center of your collarbones. But today I choose, I'm choosing to have a loving and vibrant day because. And now under your arm, if you're female and wear a bra, kind of where the bra line is, I allow myself to go with the flow. And then right to the top of the head. Sometimes it feels like I'm getting nowhere. Back to the eyebrow. Today I choose to make energetic strides in being who and what I am here to be. Side of the eye. Sometimes life feels heavy and chaotic. Under the eye. Today I choose to see the harmony and balance that is the universe. Under the nose. And what a valuable point of light I am in that harmonious universe. I should chin. Sometimes I feel disconnected from what goes on around me. Collarbone. Today I choose to connect, to see my inherent and ever present connection to everything. Under the arm. Sometimes life and society feel heavy and weigh me down. And right at the top of the head, today I choose to be grateful, knowing I'm already worthy 
loving, and balanced. Right at your eyebrow. I'm able to transform the heavy energies I feel. Side of your eye, both within myself and in the world around me. Under the eye. Today I choose to find unexpected moments of light and joy and love. Under the nose, I choose to find them in the simple things. Chin, today I choose for my energy to be of the light and in the light. At your collarbones, sometimes things seem too complicated and confusing to sort out. Under the arm, today I choose for the pieces of the puzzle to fall into place effortlessly. Top of the head, sometimes my best laid plans do not work out the way I wanted or expected. Eyebrow, just like I wouldn't stop and sulk when there's a detour in the road. Side of the eyes, today I choose to go with the flow. Move on, taking any detours in my plans in stride. Under the eye, sometimes life feels like it's on autopilot. Under the nose, today I choose to drive the vessel of my life with awareness and gratitude. Chin, sometimes I get completely wrapped up in the media, daily routines, and the external world. Collarbone, today I choose to take time to look within, to smell the roses. Under the arm, sometimes I forget to acknowledge the value of people who I appreciate. Top of the head, today I choose to appreciate those in my life who are loving, to bask in the warmth of their love. Eyebrow, sometimes I get lost in attending to the well-being and opinions and acceptance of others. Side of the eye, today I choose to pay attention to myself, my own inner world, my well-being. Under the eyes, sometimes I get blinded, following everything others tell me. Under the nose, today I choose to listen to my own inner feelings of truth and expansion. At the chin, in the past, I've made less than ideal choices in a hurry or out of habit. Collarbone, today, I choose to be more discerning about what I do, what I say, and what I believe. Under the arm, as I expect all the goodness to come into my day. Top of the head, I choose to be compassionate towards others as well. Eyebrow, when people behave irrationally or in an inconsiderate manner, Side of the eye, I choose to look past that into the real reason. I step into their shoes. Under the eye, and I wonder whether I can be of any comfort or healing to them. Under the nose, I choose to be compassionate towards myself most importantly. Chin, today I choose to be kind. Collarbone, I choose to run into pleasant people wherever I turn. Under the arm, I allow unexpected help and surprises and good things to come my way. Top of the head, every single day of my life can be full of wonder and joy. All right, last round. At the eyebrow, today I choose to be present to be vibrant, to be pleasantly surprised. Side of the eye, to be surprised by what the universe has in store for me. Under the eye, tonight as I look back into the day that was, under the nose, I choose to feel joy, gratitude, and satisfaction. Chin, 
knowing that I gave it my best and I got the best in return. Collarbone. Today I choose to align with my highest good and happiness. Under the arm. Today I choose to be the best version of me. And finally, the top of the head. Today I choose to have a loving, peaceful, and vibrant day. All right, so take a deep breath in. And just breathe that in. Imagine you're just sealing that energy that you've just created for yourself. Breathe out. And take a deep breath in again. And then breathe it in. Seal it. And then breathing out. One more time. Breathe it in. And exhale. All right, so we're going to continue. I've just shared another picture. This picture has been a theme since the solstice gathering on June 21st. It was the theme of the last podcast as well. I invite you to come into this clearing with me. And I love this picture because it helps me to imagine just an energetic clearing where Mother Nature herself created sacred space. The trees knew where to grow. So as you walk into this clearing, in the past we've been gathering as people together in a circle. This time I want you to walk into the clearing and connect to the trees. Connect to, notice if there's a single tree that's calling to you. It might be a big oak. It might be an alder, it might be an ash tree, it might be a pine tree, but as you're stepping into this clearing, notice which tree. And it might be a tree that's not in this photo, but it's a tree that's in your yard or that you know in your life. Imagine that you're going, you're coming into the circle, but you're going to meet the tree that's in, that is this circle, that has created this circle. And I invite you to walk. Imagine yourself walking through the clearing, through this meadow, and coming to stand right in front of this majestic tree. And you're looking up at this tree and starting to commune with this tree, realizing that it is, as Native Americans say, tree people. It is a living, sentient, breathing being. And as you start to sense that this tree has been around for so many lifetimes in human terms, this tree is inviting you to merge with it. So energetically, allow yourself to merge with this beautiful, vast tree. And as you merge into this tree, first just notice, feel your roots, feel the roots of this tree, how, how deep they go down. Maybe there's a large tap root that goes all the way down into this underground pool of water that nourishes this tree. And then feel all your roots as they spread wide. They're almost like energetic fingers that are reaching out to connect to all the other friends and trees and plants underground. So just saying hello to everybody. who's involved in this forest, in this clearing. Feel how vast your roots are. As as large as your canopy is, your roots are extending out over rocks, through moist soil. And then bring your awareness now up into your trunk and feel how sturdy, it's like your straight spine, this channel of energy that flows that's oh so strong, that's just organically grown little by little over time. Taking natural time to become this vast, huge trunk. And feel how sturdy and safe your energy feels within the trunk of this tree, how held you are. 
And then begin to bring your awareness up into your branches. And I invite you to consider every branch almost like an arm with an, an eye on the end. You know how the, the tree branches, when they're cut, they have these things that look like eyes. I, I often perceive every branch as an energetic portal for an eye. And, and as you get out to the leaves, there's all these little energetic tentacles and eyes for seeing. So you can move out into your leaves and feel the vastness of your canopy. Feel how you can feel the little breezes, how you can notice the birds that are sitting on your branches. And you can interact with the, the canopy of all the trees as the breeze blows. And now just taking a moment here to just simply be with this tree, to be with this vastness, this profound being that's been here for so many human lifetimes that invites you to merge your energy with it. It likely knows, has seen a human lifetime or two with struggle and heavy energy. And this tree wants you to know that it's been through all of it. And so now the tree is inviting you to begin the process of release. And I'm going to just very lightly, softly drum. And I wanna invite you while I'm drumming to send whatever you're ready to close in the chapter that's closing, to send it down into the earth through your roots. This tree is offering you a portal just release. You don't need to know what it is. Just send it down and out. And if you'd like to, you can also send it up and out through your branches. So as you breathe, imagine inhaling fresh energy energy of the tree, the energy of the fresh air. And as you exhale, you're sending down through your roots, up through your branches, any heaviness out and down, out and up. Inhaling new energy, exhaling out, inhaling more breaths here. Allow this portal of this tree to help you clear out anything and everything that's ready to go. All right. So feel clear. And as you feel this clearing, with every clearing, there's also an invitation for new energy. So bring your awareness next into this canopy, all of your leaves, all go upward, up and out into your branches, up and out into the the, the leaves of this tree and this tree is going to be a portal for you next to move up and out of the tree and as you look at the image on the screen imagine yourself being energetically transported into this eye in the sky this portal up above you and as you bring yourself into this clearing in the clouds this energetic eye First, just notice as you arrive, 
the lack of static, the clarity, the silence, the clear energy that exists in this portal. And just take a moment to notice how that feels. Total clarity. Some might call this the eye of Horus, the eye of God, the eye of the universe. This place, this, this space, this place, excuse me, is, is yours to come to whenever you need total clarity. So just spend a few moments here just kind of breathing in that total clarity. And as you breathe out, you're just already clear, so breathe out total clarity. Breathe in clear energy. Breathe out clear energy. Breathe in clear energy. And breathe out clear energy. And so here you are in this portal in the sky. And you're being invited next to look down through this eye to see the world from above. And at first, as you look down, you can just notice this, how from above, from a very far distance, that everything seems at peace. But then as you get closer, you can feel the, the jostling that's happening in the world. And you're just witnessing it right now, up above from this point of clarity. And then focus a little bit more around to you, to your life. Bring your focus to the last few days of your life, the next few days of your life. First, just visit the last few days of your life with the eyes of total clarity, looking down on yourself. Just observe how you felt, where you've been. Anything, any habit that's you've already, you can bless yourself because you've now got clarity and released it. Anything else that's up for revision is you're looking with clear eyes down on yourself. Is there anything else that's coming up for the next chapter that you know you wanna shift as you're just observing yourself in the last few days? The last few days have been extra poignant in terms of messaging for a lot of us. Or you might look at the whole eclipse season. If there was a theme, just observe. Observe from a space of energetic clarity. And now the note of the day is compassion and love for yourself. So as you move next, shift your lens into right now. See yourself right now, just seated. Maybe a smile on your face, straight spine, feeling at peace. Witness yourself right now. And as you're witnessing yourself, feel yourself kind of expand and pop out a little bit just by acknowledging like, oh, hey, I'm here. I'm doing this. This is me. This is my choice. And then from this eye in the sky, take it forward a little bit. Take it into the rest of your day. Take it into the, this new chapter that you're seeing, the next few days, this next chapter, and just allow yourself to sort of as you, as you gently vision into your future to see these energetic pathways being opened up. This new energy that you're cultivating right now, you can send it out into your future. It's almost like it's coming down from above, from this eye in the sky, down into exactly where you are right now, gathered, and then sending it into the future with these little energetic tentacles so that you can access this. And it's extending out, sort of like those tree roots, but they're like veins. The one branches into two, branches into four, branches into 16 and 50, and they're just branching out, branching out, so that your vast, bright future knows this energy. We'll be able to tap into it and harness it and remember it all into your future. So it's coming down from this clarity, this portal, this eye in the sky, down through who you are right now and sending it out into your future. Visualize that, imagine it, feel it. Wonderful. So just a little bit more time here. Taking a note that this 
recording will be available, this video will be available, but this experience, this portal in the sky, this eye of clarity, of completely clear energy is yours to access whenever you need. It's your birthright. And this, this, this connection has always been there, but we just really activated it in ritual today for our future, sort of like an attunement so that we can be able to access, pull this energy down, this clarity whenever we need. So just next, both hands over your heart, send gratitude to you for this practice, for taking this time right now. This is your choice. So send love and gratitude to yourself. And as we come back into our bodies, come back into circle, I want to invite us to feel the expansiveness, the beautiful, simple task that is our birthright and is our challenge to feel for truth, to feel for expansion, to notice to notice contraction and to choose love and expansion and to seek things that feel good because they feel good, because we want to feel good and to know that that is our, our seating for the future and also to look at the fears, the fears that come up collectively in the themes, the fears that are personally within us. Those fears are simply also opportunities they're pointing us to opportunities for change. They're pointing us to the things that just beyond a fear is another opportunity for expansion. It's very Wizard of Oz-like, right? So the little guy behind the curtain that was just talking, that's all that fear is. So when we step in, when we notice fear, we get to have these knowings of, oh, I'm going to keep going and look for good. And the ideal that came through for me that I want to see if anybody has any other words that come to mind is, you know, we're seating at peaceful. We're seeking to feel peaceful. We're seeding a peaceful world. We're seeding, we're seeking to feel empowered. We're, we're seeding an empowered world. We're seeking to remember that we're conscious creators. We want a consciously created world. And we're remembering that we are the agents of change. We are the transformers. So I wonder if anybody has anything else they want to share in terms of words, as we head towards close, words of, of what, you can type it into the chat if you want, you can unmute yourself if you want, but anything else that, for this next chapter that we're creating, is there any other um, words or visions that anyone wants to share? Not required, but I just thought since we've gathered here. Beauty. Beauty. Yes, I love it. Kate says, waves of good going out. Evie says, that was beautiful. Thank you. Mm, thank you, guys. I love, I love gathering. I love, it's an opportunity. This is a blessing, another blessing of COVID. I probably wouldn't have been so Zoom friendly. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Very supportive, powerful one. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Thank you for gathering. This, um, you know, our ancestors knew about the sacredness of the things that we're doing that we've been taught seem silly and power, not, not powerful. These are the powerful moments. I want us to really remember that these things that we're doing, these gatherings are the way that all the ancients knew how to make magic, how to transform. And this is such a powerful time for us to be gathered. So thank you guys. Any other final comments before we close? I'll, I'll put this recording on the same page that you, so you guys can come back and, and, and watch it as well. Charmaine, I feel light and full of peace and light. Ken, great to share energy with each other. Jenny, thank you, Lisa, beautiful. Feel mother and safety. Yes, we're always safe.
Charmaine says, thank you for this. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you guys. You know, but for you guys, I would be talking to the tree, of course, but it's also cool that we get to have the tree and then we all get to be together. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Kate, so needed today. Much love. Yeah. So needed. So right on time. And that's going to be the magic that I get the sense that amongst all the other stuff, there's going to be these moments of right on time. And let's open ourselves to that. That tapping that we did, I think, really helped us to remember to go and flow and to, to realize that if something's shutting, one door shutting, just let it shut. And if another door's opening, to, to let it open. And that's, our, that's also our birthright, to flow with the energy of the universe and to just be in that flow. So cheers to a bright future. Cheers to the next chapter. I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you for anchoring in so much love and light. So much gratitude, sis Julia. Oh, you're welcome. We all did it together. All right. Blessings, guys. Thank you for spending this hour with me, and I look forward to seeing y'all again in the future. Thank you so much. Peace. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Kate. <laughs>